Hey everyone, Simon here from Top Tennis Training and in this video we're going to take a look at one of my students. He's struggling with his forehand. We're going to take a look at exactly what he's doing wrong in the preparation and on the contact point and the follow through and what exactly he has to change so that he can make his forehand more reliable and more of a weapon. So let's take a look at his forehand as it is currently and let's see what he's doing in the preparation during the contact zone and also importantly after contact. Ah. So there you can see two main things that really stick out for me. The first thing is he holds the left hand a little bit too long in the preparation phase. So he, he's quite an athletic player, he's quite fast, he's quite quick around the court and he should be really dictating play with his forehand more often than not. However, on the forehand side when he is rushed, he tends to hit the ball late and he tends to hit it off to the right side off the court. Now this is because at the start of the swing he's preparing with the left hand and he isn't letting go when he has that initial unit turn. So it's important to use the left hand, it's very important to have this left hand working to start this preparation phase but as soon as you reach the side of the body you should release and this racket should start preparing on its own. It should be almost like you're using the left hand to initiate the swing, but it isn't doing this and waiting and waiting and waiting, which is what he is doing. He's waiting way too long with his left hand, and this is then causing him to be late later in the swing because he's waiting so long here, by the time he actually separates the arms, the ball's already bounced and it's coming up to him. And a common thing that I see time and time again that, that he's doing is he's preparing, he's waiting, waiting, the ball bounces and then he separates and that's simply too late. So that's the first thing. Now the second thing he does is sometimes he loses track of the racket behind him and his forehand ends up with the racket being in that position there. So let's go back to that left hand now in the preparation phase. Why is it important to allow this left hand to come off? There's two reasons. The first one is, if I hold it too long, I'm gonna be late, of course. If I'm holding it like this, I'll have no time to reach that power position and then the swing forward. But also the second thing is, this left hand is the balancer. This is gonna help me balance the upper body. When I do release, this hand is almost tracking the ball. So it's important that my left hand is allowed to do its job. If I'm holding too long, I'm not gonna prepare with the racket head, but I'm also not balanced and I'm not tracking the ball with my non-hitting hand. If I'm facing the net and that's 12 o'clock, if the racket head now is facing 12 o'clock, if I take it right behind me and now it's facing behind the back fence, it's six o'clock. So if we imagine that clock face, forwards is now 12, so I'm in 12, I start the preparation, one, two, and now I'm about three o'clock. By three o'clock on that clock face, I should already have released that left hand. So 12 o'clock, one, two, three, release. Three o'clock is the latest. So if you look at most of the pros, by two to three o'clock, they've already released that left hand. So they're in the preparation phase and there they're starting that shoulder turn, that unit turn and now the release happens. So if you are someone who uses that left hand, be aware of when you're letting go. Are you letting go at one o'clock, two o'clock, 
or three o'clock. Ideally, it's between two and three o'clock. You're going to be releasing that racket head from the left hand. So 12, three, and I've already released. So the first step for me was to get him hitting with his left hand behind his back. Now, the reason I'm doing this is simply so that his right hand is now the lead. It's now taking the lead of that swing. It's not the left hand dictating. It's the right hand, it's the boss. The right hand is now getting the racket from the ready position into the power position. So let's take a look at that drill right now. Yes, fast one. There we go. So those last four. There we go. Whole hand. So now he's felt what it's like to hit forehands without the left hand dictating the swing. So now his right hand is more engaged, it's working more. Now the next step is for him to feel that power position and for him to get confident in holding that power position. So one of my favorite drills for players to feel that position, I do this a lot with the junior players who I coach, I get them in that power position and when they're in that position, I try to move the racket head, I try to move their left hand, I try to move the right hand. So they have to hold that position in a strong way so that I'm not allowed to move their hands. So let's take a look at that drill right now. Doesn't move, doesn't move. Keep it strong. Not too strong. Like this. Yes, just for now. So now he's felt that position. I'm now going to drop feed him balls on the spot where he's just working from that position. Two things I wanted him to focus on in this exercise. The first thing was, of course, reaching that position time and time again on his own. And secondly, making sure that he's watching the ball at contact because he has a habit of lifting up his head prior to contact. So watching the ball rise up off the ground onto his strings and also feeling that he's generating a bit more spin. So he's dropping the racket head. So from the power position, not just coming on the ball level, but dropping under and then brushing up. So that he has a safer shot, something that he can rely on time and time again in a match. There we go. A little bit more spin now. Really lift the ball. Last two. Last one. Now the next step of the lesson was me making him work on that early unit turn, that early preparation. So we use the band, the resistance band for this. And in this exercise, all his focus is, is just going from the ready position, getting that quick initial shoulder turn and a little bit of the hips turning so when he does add the racket, he's getting that racket back and on side of his body as quickly as possible. So from the ready position, it's going to look something like that. That quick initial shoulder turn, that unit turn. The quicker you do this, the more time you'll have to set up into the power position to hit a good shot. There, one, two, three, four, good, five, yes. Now the next step was him hitting and coming forward with the back leg, the right leg, and the right shoulder. He has a habit of sometimes hitting the ball and stopping halfway. So he's rotated the shoulders, but he hasn't fully rotated them, and he also hasn't opened up the hips fully or the legs. So he has a habit of hitting the shot and staying on the spot. So my goal in this drill, with the two lines you'll see now, is I want him to feel that he's going from the neutral position from that power position, hitting, firstly the shoulder comes forward, then the hip, and then the back foot. So eventually he's gonna go from here to there. So that full rotation from the right leg and right shoulder being back to the right shoulder and right leg being forward facing that. There. Try and make it quicker. Yes, a little bit late. Now, there we go. So the upper body goes first, Goes there, up body starts, hips come, and then the leg follows. So this is first? That's first. With this one? Yes. There we go. There. Good one. And now the last part of the lesson was me feeding him balls from the ready position, him feeling that he's going from the ready position into that unit turn, into that power position, and trying to brush the ball a bit more, and hopefully he can see a big difference in his forehand. Okay. Yes. Those are much, much better. 
Now there you have it guys, I've given him some homework, he has to do quite a lot of shadow swings in front of a mirror, so he's working on that technique. The main parts for him to carry on working on would be from the ready position, releasing with the left hand, not holding too long, getting that unit turn, reaching a good power position, not allowing the strings to open up like so, and then from here, feeling that the back shoulder is releasing on the way forward. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, give it a thumbs up, click that like button. Also leave a comment, what do you think of this video? Would you like to see more videos like this in the near future? If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you get our newest videos as soon as we release them. Signing off, Simon from TTT. All the best guys, see you soon.